Um, why don't we begin? Um, just as I was boasting about how my good internet connection is, I started getting a message that it's unstable. So I really hope that um, I won't be the reason that this meeting has to end prematurely. But if there continue to be issues, we may need to turn off our videos um, and just to conduct this as a regular phone call. Um, I might have... Uh, Brian's story when he joins in help me map function through which you can raise hands uh, to speak. So the the chat function, um, because I fear that I won't be able to multitask and, and, and be able to follow everybody to speak. Um, for those who are on the phone, you might know that in order to um, request uh, or to raise a hand or make a request to be unmuted, please press, press star nine. Um, all others can use the, the functions, participant and chat functions on the call. Um, so thank you for being the meeting. Um, okay, I have to admit. And that's free, Bridge. Um, we haven't met for a while uh, for understandable reasons, uh, but during the time we haven't met, there has been a, a tremendous amount vis-a-vis -vis broadband happening uh, at the statewide level. Um, and it's all directed at this heightened sense of, or heightened alert of the of broadband deficiency and looking for resources that could be redirected uh, towards faster broadband deployment. Um, a lot of the attention is, is being directed to communications union district as a carrier that can be viable in helping to um, build out the broadband infrastructure. And therefore the topic of this meeting today is to, I would really like to solidify our position as to there is willingness in our area to establish a communications union district or potentially join an existing district uh, because the fact that we do not have a governing entity that would be able to um, advocate for our interests um, is of a detriment right now. I, I feel it as being a really single seems to have frozen. I hope that she'll be with us soon. I'm sorry. I don't know for how long I was not available. Uh, I just got, got kicked out of the meeting. Um, and not even a minute. You're good. Okay. Yeah, you might have better success. I think uh, Lucy was speaking to this. If you turn your video off and just go audio. Okay. Why don't I do that? There you go. Thank you, Mike. Um, so, um, and what was the last thing I said that you heard? You were talking, Leia, about the kind of increased in interest in communication union districts during COVID. Yes, um, and I, um, you know, um, and I said that the communications union districts are looking to as one of the partners that can help with broadband deployment. And I feel that it is very important um, for us in order to be able to move forward to talk about having a governing entity that would be a speaking voice for our efforts. Um, 
And so the purpose of the meeting today would be to really establish, um, is there a firm interest in moving forward in this direction? Leah, you can unmute and continue. <laughs> oh my goodness. I feel really bad about this. <laughs> You shouldn't. It just proves that we need to do something. It's fine. Yeah, you could just share this with the committee tomorrow. <laughs> right? You should, yeah, we'd record it, but we can't. Okay. Um, and, and so the step that we could act on if we had a governing entity would be to start talking to internet service providers to establish a public-private partnership of sorts that would allow us to, uh, to transition from the feasibility study stage to an implementation stage. Um, we have been uh, looking at, and by saying we is uh, with, with the help of Lucy Rogers, we have been looking at potential obstacles that might not enable us to create a communications union district at this time when we are not able to conduct a town meeting or a special town meeting in person, which currently is a legislative requirement for um, creating such a district. Um, and at this point, before I continue further, I would ask Lucy if Lucy can provide an update for all of you on what's happening on that front. Sure. Yeah, so Leah and I first discussed this, I think last week, about the process of forming a communications union district during COVID and what that would look like. During, under current Vermont law, a communications union district is formed when two or more towns at town meeting or at a special town meeting vote by a vote, a majority vote of the town to create a communications union district. So for example, this past town meeting, the Northeast Kingdom just created their communication union district where 27 towns had it as a vote at town meeting and the district was formed. If a new communications union district were to want to form now, that poses a problem during COVID-19 where we can't have a town meeting. So I reached out to the Secretary of State's office to kind of look at what the options would be if if we did want to form a communications union district during COVID-19. And the only real option under the current law would be to do a vote by Australian ballot of at least two towns um, and form the district that way. The problem with that is it still does, even though it doesn't create the risk of everybody coming together, it still does expose the poll workers because you, even if you're voting by Australian ballot and people mail in, you still have to have a physical voting option. Um, so over the weekend, I've been working with some of my legislative colleagues on the relevant committees, which is government operations and energy and technology in the House. And we've drafted legislation that would do a few things, um, but most importantly would change so that during the declared state of emergency for COVID-19, um, the a communication union district could be formed by vote of the select board of a town instead of the majority of a town. And this is consistent with currently once a communication union district is formed by vote of a majority of the people in a town, new towns can join simply through vote of the select board. Um, so this, this, this puts the select board piece in the formation and the joining once a CUD is formed stages of it. Um, the other pieces that the legislation that we've drafted would do is it just, it, it, makes the dates a little bit more consistent for when a, a, a communication union district board can begin meeting after, after it's formed. Um, the intent right now is that a CUD could be formed at an annual town meeting or a special town meeting, but all the language in the law is written with dates that are, you know, appointments by the end of April, the board's first meeting in the beginning of May that are super tied to the timing of town meeting. So it takes the months out of it and just ties it to um, how long after the CUD is formed should the board start meeting. Um, I think that's pretty much what I have to say, Leah, other than it seems like there's good momentum. The um, Government Operations Committee is taking this up at their meeting tomorrow at 1030, and Leah will be one of the people testifying about it. Um, I can send the link out to that meeting if anyone's interested in watching it. 
I'll put it in the chat and then maybe email it afterwards. And then the we've we've also been talking to our colleagues in the Senate who will be taking this up afterwards if it passes through the House and there seems to be a good amount of support there as well. So I guess in the legislature really until is signed into law, anything could happen, but it does seem like there's there's good momentum that this could be um, moving pretty quickly, which would be good. Anything I missed, Leah? Um, this is good, Lucy, and um, I would soon like to open it up to discussion, but a couple more points I would like to say vis-a-vis um, -vis the funding. Um, you may be familiar um, of, of the funding sources that are currently available for broadband deployment. Um, I think one of the ones that is um, looking promising for where there is an eligibility and where is organization happening on a grassroots level as well as where they may, may be an interested service provider to serve is the upcoming uh, Federal Communications Commission RDOF, which means Rural Development Opportunity Fund uh, Auction. That is going to be happening in October uh, this year. But also we know that at the national level, um, Representative, Representative Welch and others are working and, and the Public Service Department is anticipating that there will be more dollars flowing to the state with deadlines that are going to be more reasonable than what we are seeing uh, in terms of the potential usage for broadband for the current COVID CARES package. Um, and so really uh, those who are prepared are going to benefit from those resources. Um, I have been very closely reviewing uh, also the emergency broadband plan, uh, that action plan that the public, department, uh, the public service department drafted and the state itself is reaching to out to some other potential funding sources with the understanding that then they, the state, not at the federal level, but the state would be uh, conducting an auction for um, broadband deployment. And it is anticipated that communications union district will be, will have an important play in that auction process either as an entity that can, um, you know, be a bidder itself or with a combination, uh, in a combination with an ISP or have a vote at the table for when there are bids received for the area where a district exists to weigh in as to what seems like the most feasible option for them. Um, so, I've been thinking about this a lot um, and I have a feeling that as we worked together for these past months that um, somewhere on board with the CUD pursuit, some warmed up maybe to the idea to that pursuit as we as we went along and for some of those I'm still and some of us I'm still unsure. Uh, and that's another reason for this meeting. Um, so at this point, I would it up, open it up to questions. We can talk about pros and cons of going this way. We can also be discussing the possibility of, should we be focusing on creating our district or do folks really feel strongly about joining an existing district and what would be pros and cons of that option? Um, ultimately, I would like to walk out of this meeting with a better sense of where you stand and if by any chance uh, there is a, you know, strong confidence towards proceeding this way and the legislation that Lucy uh, talked about comes, comes along, um, you know, my goal would be to hold community meetings uh, at the select board level and open to the communities over the month of June, and then put this up for a vote, at least in two towns um, in July. 
so that we can then organize and begin our next steps. Okay, that's it. Um, I would appreciate, um, really would appreciate your input on all of this that has been put in front of you. Okay, I, I think maybe Doug wanted to chat. Did I say that? Well, I saw a yellow circle. <laughs> That's probably random. Uh, okay. I was waiting for like people from the Johnson Committee to uh, to weigh in. I, I have my own ideas, but I I think that I uh, we should be listening to what they might say. You know. Uh, I'll shoot. Go ahead. And, and, and I see this is Rob. Uh, Rob, if you can introduce yourself and just who you represent, and I would ask everybody to do the same. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Rob Rodriguez. I'm on the uh, Johnson Broadband Committee. And I think there's five of us here, four of us here. Uh, anyway, um, I don't know if I'm really speaking for the committee. I guess I'm more speaking for myself. But if we were... If I were going to, I guess, vote on a CUD, I would vote to form our own rather than join an existing one. And I say that because the Northeast Kingdom CUD has like, I don't know, 20 towns or something, which I think is too many. I mean, how do you how do you satisfy all those towns all at the same time? So um, I, I think we only need two towns to form a CUD, is that right? That's right. So I don't, I would be more apt to want to do a, I guess a Lamoille County CUD if it were up to me. And uh, I wouldn't even be opposed to forming multiple CUDs in Lamoille County if, if we just wanted to do a couple towns together. My, my, I guess my issue with having five or six or seven or eight towns in one CUD is we have a hard enough time getting one town to agree on something. Trying to get eight towns to agree, I think is going to be even harder. I think it would go faster if the CUDs were smaller. I guess that's all I wanted to put out there. Thank you, Rob. I'll lay up. Can I speak? Um, Jeff Tilton. From I'm, I'm um, I just wanted to add that, you know, one of the big findings from the Tillerson, uh, study was that, um, with the bigger CUDs, you do get, uh, a lot more efficient, uh, in terms of costs and the ability to be self-sustaining. Uh, in my understanding that it's going to be Tillerson doing the, uh, the study for us. Um, yes. That, so, I mean, they're going to have a background with what's happening in the Northeast Kingdom anyway. So they'll probably be able to provide some sort of guidance as to what their suggestion would be anyway, I'm assuming. Um, and I think that would be really good to know uh, going into it. But. Um, yes, this is, this is a very good point. Um, I would also say that what I'm seeing at the state level is that there is a very strong effort in coordinating between the CUDs um, so that everybody's on the same page. And when CUDs are formed, um, you know, these are volunteer boards. So there is a lot of help that the boards need to get off the ground. And the conversations at the state levels are, you know, what what support can be provided with administration, with things like drafting bylaws, with maybe initial funding injection to get the CUDs going, as well as talk about interconnectivity of these various networks. Um, I was on a call earlier with Velco, where all CUDs and potential CUDs and some providers participated to understand how Velco's infrastructure could be used as a as a backhaul for to support all of these efforts. So inevitably, um, I think we are going towards um, we, we, towards a situation 
where we will be collaborating regardless of what the geographical boundaries are of a of, of various CUDs and with that reason you know I'm feeling comfortable to start conversations uh, about potentially forming our own anyway because we would be linking with others inevitably um, I saw two people uh, raising hands um, one is Carol Keldwell Admins from um, Belvedere and then Gallanter from Johnson. So I would like to acknowledge Carol. Hi, thanks, Leah. I think in Belvedere there is increased interest since we did a survey at town meeting and people are interested in getting better service in this area and i have to speak up for joining a larger group of people it can be a lamoille county um northeast kingdom is rather you know geographically distant but to me when you're dealing with broadband i feel like consolidated hasn't listened so far because we are so insignificant in their market base we just there aren't enough of us and yet the need is there and it is equal with any large city. I mean, people need to have connectivity. As far as joining Johnson, I think it'd be a great idea since I did a speed test at Johnson State's library and they are on a gigabit connection and I literally had seven, over like 700 megabits upload. And I kept redoing it because I thought I was doing it wrong. So I think that joining forces regionally is a good idea. Thank you, Carol. Um, Charles? Uh, yeah, Charlie Gallanter, Johnson Broadband Committee. Um, the real problem, as I see it, is internet service provider. The CUD can wire and do take care of the capital portion of the of the of the project, but who then operates? The system who is the internet service provider that gives you the the day-to-day -day service that gives you the whatever speeds we're talking about uh, I'm not in favor of joining the Northeast Kingdom CUD because that's already 27 towns with two representatives to the to their board that's 54 people uh, it's a little unmanageable and from talking to other people at the last meeting that we had it was beyond optimal. The, um, the critical mass for an ISP, as opposed to a CUD, is a thousand subscribers. In order to be able to service the, service the customer base, you need about, um, about a thousand customers as your break even point. But until we get this big thing uh, I'm not too concerned about the feasibility study. I want to see the business plan portion of it to know how many people are going to sign up or do we need an REA kind of, uh, kind of setup where the government, where quasi-private, quasi-governmental organizations actually do it. The, um, I, uh, my understanding is that individual towns can form ready districts, REDI uh, districts. And, but from what I've been reading in, in the emergency broadband funding proposals, they don't mention that. They mention C CUDs and legacy carriers. I, my question is why is it why is the state so hot for CUDs? Dan and Lucy. Why, why is all the legislation written around CUDs? Why are you pushing them so hard? And I will mute while you to answer that. Lucy, would you like to go first? Uh, sure. Or do you want I mean either. I don't really um, I mean, I guess to be clear, we aren't pushing CUDs. We're mm -hmm. an avenue for um, municipalities who have come to the state to ask for this option to create an avenue for, for the option to 
be possible. Um, my understanding, not having been in the legislature during the 2015 when the original CUD legislation was passed specifically with EC fiber in mind, my understanding is that the, the reason why the towns were coming and asking for the ability to create a CUD was to have more flexibility in being able to control um, various components of provision, but but most importantly, universal service. So, if a if a large um, internet out of state internet company is coming into a rural area with no obligation to serve all households, it's they'll very commonly do donut holing where they'll go down the main roads and then leave all of the back roads without service, and so my understanding of the history of this is that the towns in the EC fiber area came to the state and asked to have the ability to band together to form some sort of a municipality so that they could own infrastructure and be have a board that would be in charge of making decisions and make and setting their own goals one of which for EC fiber was that every household in the district would be served um, and at this point I think it's been a model that many other areas in Vermont have found to be successful, which is why, uh, you know, in this past town meeting, the number of CUDs in the state doubled, but at least speaking for myself, and I think for many people in the legislature, I think we're agnostic as to whether or not they're formed, but trying to create the avenue for the communities that do choose to form them. Dan? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, like you said, it's it's a way to have local control and make sure that the, the, the towns get built out to the, um, you know, last mile. Um, and the reason the funding is going this way, I think, is just the path of least resistance. They basically have a lot of these CUDs form. So it's it's really a, an easy way. If you're talking about putting the CARES money into it, um, it's an existing infrastructure that they can um, they can look to 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 invest in. So. From what I understand, I'm, I'm definitely no expert on this. I'm I'm glad to you know learn more, and and uh, I would be interested in learning more about the two other uh, models that you spoke about, Charlie. The two other models were the legacy carriers, Comcast, Charter, I guess is one, and and um, Consolidated, and that was pretty much it. That and Com yeah, Comcast. Cable, they talked about giving money to cable providers under this CARES thing and to the legacy carriers, which are Charter and Comcast, and to CUDs. They didn't mention anything else. They didn't mention public-private partnerships. Um, I, can, I can step in. Um, the other option that Charles was talking about were so-called readies, economic development infrastructure those historically have been, is my understanding, in the statute before the Communications Union District. And under those municipalities that wanted to provide infrastructure, for, that was the enabling legislation for that. All kinds of infrastructure could be looking at the water district or, or some other infrastructure band would qualify for that as well. There are slightly different avenues of forming such a district, but I do not really, uh, but, but in many other aspects, these districts and the communications union districts are alike. So if we are enabled, then it seems a lot of goodwill at the legislature to listen to us about enabling us to create a CUD at this time, uh, I see no reason to look for another structure. Um, and um, CUD is recognized in part because it, of its specific focus on, on uh, communications plant, that is uh, the broadband infrastructure. And um, I was just going to pull up, um, and if I, if I manage to do that, to share screen, is to see if you haven't seen a map of where these districts exist or where the statewide initiatives are happening. Not all of them are CUD based, but if we would like to proceed as some kind of a regional municipality and are enabled to do so by the statute, 
I think we should focus on that option because it's an option that is easily understandable by the legislators. Um, and it's, it's the type of a structure, as I said, that is now branching out into networking statewide. So I feel that it does have a success, uh, that does have a chance to succeed precisely because it's now starting to reach a pretty wide coverage throughout the state. Leia, can I add to that quickly? Yes. Yeah, I, I think there there is a piece of that as well. And um, the five existing kind of larger CUDs in the state just wrote a letter to the federal, to our fellow federal delegation in Vermont, um, kind of asking that CUDs be considered in future federal money. And so I think there is definitely an advantage it's being shown right now that there is collaboration happening between the different CUDs and there is an advantage to joining a structure that would be, you know, maybe specific to Lamoille County, but have the opportunity to collaborate with other similar municipalities throughout the state. Right. Thank you, Lucy. Um, anybody else would like to contribute to the discussion? This is Tim Humphrey, chair of CDAC, uh, which serves as Cambridge, Cambridge's broadband committee. And um, I just would like, as best as anyone can describe, the costs and potential drawbacks of towns joining CUDs. Okay. Um... I can take a stab at that. And I take it, Tim, you are not now asking about whether it's our own draw drawbacks for our own or whether the drawbacks for joining somebody else, but just kind of drawbacks in general. Is, is that kind of the gist of your question? Yeah, I'd say drawbacks in general. And, and I lost connection for a little while, but um, from what I heard, most people saying that um, it seemed like the Northeast Kingdom was a little crowded. So mm -hmm. even if your comments are more directed at starting our own, that would be fine. But any drawbacks, okay. just to understand. Well, you know, one drawback there is, is that obviously this is another layer of, you know, another entity that is going to need to have local volunteers uh, to manage it, to be a part of it. And so imagine that, you know, the first task for these towns would be to appoint two individuals, the best they can think they would represent a district. And I would envision that there would be some investment uh, in terms of time to be able, at, at least at the beginning, to get going, is, is, is to be able to get started. Um, it's also um, some of the discussions that are happening uh, on the level of the CUDs. Uh, you know, the boards that have some technical exper expertise or financial ex expertise, you know, can benefit. Um, so again, that speaks to the fact that uh, it's time for the board, uh, and it's it's uh, uh, there needs to be a really good board composition in order to be able to proceed. Um, I think the role of a CUD could be significantly lightened in terms of the time investment if there was some sort of help, uh, professional help that they can draw on in order to ask questions so that you don't have to do that work on your own. Um, at the LCPC, we haven't discussed in very detail what this could look like, but I'd like to say that I would, you know, like to be able to provide some form of support to the district so that it can succeed in case we do have a Lamoille-based one. Um, in the Northeast Kingdom, for, for example, I know that that Regional Planning Commission in that area is supporting the district by the function of uh, being the fiscal agent and the treasurer for the district. 
So that's one specific role. But, but I could imagine that um, we would be able to support you with this. Um, so volunteer time, that's, that's the major, major drawback. Um, anybody else sees any other drawbacks based on what they know? Laid, I think the other half of the question was about the financial piece. Did you want to speak to that or did you, do you want, would you like me to? Okay. Um, why don't you start Lucy and then I can piggyback. Sure. Yeah. So the Vermont statute just makes it very clear that towns have no financial liability if they join a CUD and no taxpayer money can be used to fund the CUD. Um, I'm not sure there's much more to say about that. Other than see, forming a CUD does open up, can have the potential to open up grant and loan opportunities. Um, and then obviously the goal is that eventually it would pay for itself through, through rate payers, but the, it's, it's very clear that, that even if towns wanted to, they would not be able to, to levy taxes um, mm -hmm. to convert the CUD. Is it, I don't know if there's more than that to say. Well, I can continue on the financial path. I mean, obviously a new CUD starts, um, and then I know, I, I, I wanna acknowledge that Bruce Wheeler is from Walcott is raising his hand. So I'll just finish my thought and then let Bruce um, follow up. Um, you know, the CUDs are starting with no money in their pockets uh, and that can make it hard but that's where I feel situation is improving because of the state state being vested into supporting these strategies and helping to make them succeed. So I think that's going to improve. Um, some other CUD started by grant writing. Um, and that's also something that I would like to imagine that the Illinois County Planning Commission would be able to help with. Although Ideally, we would be able to tap some other source of funding that would allow to get us started sooner because the grants turn around. And now I'm thinking even smaller grants for organizational things would take some time to get. Uh, but the good news is, uh, you know, I, I believe that we have a good identity. I'm going to call it a regional identity just from the past work and our I think we have a somewhat of a good working relationship and we've already had some money, although not a CUD, but the LCPC to like, get things jump started. Um, before well, uh, I, I appreciate those answers. Thank you. And before I um, lose the mic here and you don't even have to answer right away. I just wanted to get this question out there and I know it's a little bit unique to Cambridge, but is there any precedent in Vermont for establishing a CUD and working with an existing provider or partnering with an existing provider. Um, I certainly don't speak for Stowe Cable, but we're in a I'm situation sorry, can where... Question, can you hear me? Um, I, I can, but it was you were kind of on and off, so I heard... Okay, I'm just question. wondering if there's, a, if there's a precedent for working with an existing provider, because we have an existing local provider that is currently expanding and it's it's far from perfect but um that's a consideration for cambridge um yes there is a precedent for working with local providers um i think a general a good practice and that's where i had talked at the beginning about creating public private partnerships which would hinge on partnerships with internet service providers um I think it's that would be the first one of the first major tasks of the board is to be having those conversations and to see what the willingness is of the current providers uh, or those that you would like to explore working with and understand the term of that collaboration. Uh, in the town of Newberry, which uh, interestingly enough is a ready district of one town. Um, they have, they were funded with their feasibility study like we were just now in round one. So that was 
I believe last fall. And initially when they got going several years ago as a ready, they have four different providers, some of them very local and some of them more of a regional uh, that is consolidated. And they've reached out to them to see if they had any interest in expanding the, their territories within the communities. And those providers uh, decided not to. Um, I don't know their names exactly. It's, um, but, but, but the one that was willing to cover the rest of the underserved territory was uh, consolidated communications. So they are now proceeding with consolidated to, to work on the serving of the underserved. So I, I um, you know, maybe not the story that totally applies to Cambridge, but there is a definitely a precedent for that. Um, I will give floor to Bruce now from Walcott. This is Bruce. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, I was muted by the star six. I didn't do that, but um, yeah, I just wanted to say a few things. I agree with much of what was said in terms of, you know, fewer towns uh, it, joining an existing CUD. They're, they're pretty large. I, I would favor a, a smaller group of towns. Um, the CV uh, fiber CUD uh, is way ahead of us. So, you know, to get something done, they'll be doing stuff along before it would be at the tail end of that, I would suspect, because they have a lot of their plans already in place. Um, creating it soon, uh, I would favor creating it as soon as possible. Um, now, I'm not speaking for the, the Woke Up Planning Commission, it's just my own opinion for now, but uh, we'll get together and talk about it soon. The, uh, there's a lot of money coming in from CARE, but it has to be spent this year, as I understand it. And then I would ask, well, what can we do form a cut up quickly and there's there are things that need to be done for the emergency for the digital divide just just to get ahead of some of that for the school returning uh and get some extra bandwidth out there so is that piece no, of work Bruce, in the sort think of we may have we may lost you could others could can others, can others, others hear, bruce? hear bruce yeah can you still hear me hello yeah. Yeah. yes we yeah. can hear you oh, okay we can, um, hear you. we can hear you um I was just saying, uh, first, that the funding, uh, would, there's a lot of funding that would need to be spent this year, and I'm wondering what we could do if we had a CUD form that we could look at ideas and, and, and think about what we could do this year. Uh, the fiber and, and those kind of things will be out later, as I understand it. Um, that's pretty much it. I, I, I agree with Leah. The, the regional identity is, is, is an important part of it, and uh, it's, it's an exciting technology. It's exciting times. So I, I do think they would they, you could get a, a good group of volunteers to, to do this work. That's all for me. Um, I, I, I did say that um, the fastest possible was because there was money to be spent this year and there are some things we could do right away. Uh, it would be helpful with the cut. We can do them separately. Um, fiber is going to take quite a while to do. Um, I said that joining EC Fiber CV fiber could be a problem because they're so far ahead and they're they're going at they're, you know they're they're going to be putting out money soon so I think we just wouldn't fit into their plan until later uh, so that's about it. I'm not quite sure that uh, the towns can't give money to the CUD. I know they can't underwrite the debt to, as general obligation, uh, but if we're going to rely on future grants from the state state has a real budget problem a real huge budget problem you know they're going to be parceling out grants to um to cuts in terms of uh internet service providers um i've reached out to consolidate it as a potential isp and they have not responded there is interest in, interest from an mc fiber in both uh in johnson parts of waterville I think they're, they are currently in Fletcher, so they're going to surround Cambridge, and they may be able to do parts of Cambridge. There's a relationship between MC Fiber and Stowe Cable that uh, precludes MC Fiber poaching too much of Cambridge. So those are my comments at the moment, but seriously, folks, do you think that the legislature is going to appropriate grants for 
heads. I see, I see Dan shaking his head no. So yeah, we got a sixty million dollar shortfall right now. And you, but you're talking about, um, you know, there could be fed, federal money coming in uh, under, you know, additional Recovery Act stuff, and you know, that's the only reason uh, in the short term where you're going to see it. Um, it, it. You're right. You're not probably not going to see a lot of general fund money going towards. Um, towards this, especially with the revenue projections. The uh, problem with the infrastructure bills is that they've been working on those for decades. And the current uh, COVID-19 infrastructure legislation, infrastructure portion of it is stuck. It's still stuck. I mean, that's gonna cover highways, bridges, waterways, and little old states like Vermont, New Mexico, Wyoming. I'll probably second hand tip on that. Or getting the minimum amount, which usually is pretty beneficial for Vermont. Um, but if you don't have the um, kind of the infrastructure of a, a CUD or something like that ready to go, then it's going to be harder. It's going to be the communities that are ready to go um, that are going to be first in line. And so I just want to put that out there. Okay, um, I, you know, we can keep chatting, but I would like to summarize where I've, my feeling from this conversation is, is that there is a general interest in moving forward, more preferably than uh, perhaps with, uh, with our own. Um, however, I understand the uh, Jeff Tilton's comment about relating the results of the feasibility study to our actions. Um, what Charlie was saying uh, at this very last contribution, to me, that's the type of a conversation that you would have if you have a CUD, then you can start talking about who would be your viable partner. Um, so I think I would look at it that way. Um, the money, we never know, but Dan, you might have just said that. I still believe that if we are not prepared, uh, we will be worse off. I may have caught in the chat, there was a brief discussion about including electrical utilities. Those discussions are ongoing. There is a role, I believe very firmly, that the utilities will play in all of this, but again, a structure that is backing you up as a multi-town representation would be able to have those conversations with, their, with the electric utilities directly also. Um, in the meantime, you know, I'm committing to following this up as much as I can. And I would like to suggest as our immediate next step is to reconvene in two weeks. Did Leia cut out again for everyone else? Yes, she did. I just texted her again. Okay. She says that she's lost her connection. Well, um, hey, I just I'll pick right, up then. something in the, uh, sorry, Brian, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say kind of the, we were talking, she was talking about next steps, but reconvening in two weeks. I think mm -hmm. we can kind of pick up with that. Sure. Um, hey, I just wanted to pick up something in the chat around the electric companies. Just briefly, there probably needs to be some sort of legislative change, but from what I understand, um, you know, it's definitely something that, you know, on energy and technology, they're a committee, they're probably absolutely talking about, but um, 
it could be even federal changes that need to be made. So I don't know enough about it to really say that, um, you know, in order to use ratepayer dollars to be able to go into other types of businesses, uh, there needs to be changes and I'm not sure what those are. That's all I've been told. So uh, Vermont Electric Co-op got a $30,000 grant to study it, but they need to make a charter change and it's not on their upcoming ballot, which is to be voted on in May, which indicates that they're gonna move it at, the, at their usual glacial speed. And Doug, if you get high-speed internet within 10 years, you should be very happy. Oh. I'm trying to say he lives at the end of the line, Charlie. Do I have to read? No, it's just that? the way this process is going and things crop up and... Yeah, we covered my life expectancy earlier on in this thing, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, Doug, you and I both. Leia, are, is Leia, are, are you back on, Leia? I am back on. I was trying to see if I can just join in by phone, but um, I think Brian, I, I heard Brian sort of summarizing on, on uh, which was great. Basically, I'd like to say, I'd like to propose, let's meet in two weeks if you have time uh, with the renewed perspectives and summarizing what's new legislative knowledge out there and then decide if it's viable to to do some kind of a community-wide sessions uh, to discuss this with, with our communities further. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, I very much apologize. Um, next time I will go to Belvedere's new hotspot, which I hear is really good. <laughs> for our further conversation, or I may just revert to an old conference call so that we can communicate seamlessly. Um, thank you all, have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.